What's up guys? So retro consoles are expensive to buy as well as being harder to find year after year. So the best way to experience the past is with emulation. It's digital so it won't deteriorate and allows you to preserve history that may one day disappear. So in this video, I'm going to share what I consider to be the best 10 emulators to relive the classic days. And if I have a tutorial for these emulators, you will find the links in the description below. So kicking things off is MAME, an emulator for those of you like me that love arcade games from back in the day. There are a ton of great arcade classics that would have been forgotten if it wasn't for this emulator. I really enjoy all the side scrolling beat em ups that can be played with MAME because a lot of these arcade games were never released on consoles. Now I must say if you are a beginner to emulation then MAME may be complicated to set up. Even the ROMs for the emulator come in multiple different formats. But once you do figure it all out and have everything set up the fun you'll have will have made the stress of setup worth it. My number 9 pick is an original PlayStation emulator called Duck Station. Now, this emulator is no longer in development, but it was left in a good state. And I know a lot of people like the PS1 emulator EPSXE, but I find Duck Station has a more simple to use UI as well as a ton of features. Along with graphic upscaling, it can fix textures and play games in true widescreen. Now, just like other PlayStation emulators, you will need a BIOS file to be able to play games, but it isn't hard to find one after doing a quick Google search. Number 8 is Xenia. This is an original Xbox and Xbox 360 emulator all in one. So you get the best of both worlds with this one. The OG Xbox will run with no problems on this emulator and you can even run the big titles that were released on the 360 with really no issues. Games such as Red Dead and GTA 5. You would think this emulator would be complicated to get up and running but actually there's not much required to get Xenia running. Which is always great for newcomers to emulation. So if you're in the need to relive some old Xbox and 360 games, well, it doesn't get any better than Xenia. Number 7 is an emulator for my favorite handheld of all time. Desmu Me, the Nintendo DS emulator. I spent a lot of time on my DS as a kid, playing mostly Pokemon games, and now when I want to relive those moments, I turn to Desmu Me for a better experience. We know the DS had two screens, and this emulator does a good job of giving you different layout options to view them both. You also get quite a few filters to make the graphics look better. Now this was a tough choice to make because Melon DS is another great DS emulator, but Desmu Me was there before it and is more mature. But anyways, if you're into Pokemon games and DS honestly had some of the best ones released, then this emulator is the emulator I recommend. Number 6 is PPSSPP. Now, I didn't own a PSP back in the day, so my first experience playing its games was through this emulator, which was really nice because I got to experience PSP games with upscale graphics and on a bigger screen. Plus playing them on this well-designed emulator that still gets updates today was a big win. The emulator is easy to set up and has a nice interface that displays box art for your ROMs. Now one thing I didn't like about the PSP was the fact that it only had one analog stick and playing games you would have to use the shoulder buttons to turn the camera and that takes some getting used to, but the games were still fun. Coming in at that halfway spot is the Sega Dreamcast emulator, ReDream. 
This was Sega's last console and there were only 624 games released for the console, but there were some quality titles in the mix and the best way to experience them today is using this emulator. ReDream has support for 95% of the Dreamcast library. It has a beautiful and easy to navigate interface that showcases box art over your ROMs with the option to upscale your graphics. But to do this, you will have to use the paid version of this emulator, which is $6, but trust me, it's worth it. My number four pick is the GameCube and Wii emulator Dolphin. This emulator went into development right after the GameCube released and today it plays two great consoles. If you plan on using this emulator mostly for Wii emulation, there is a device you can buy on Amazon called the Sensor Bar that will allow you to use a real Wii remote with the emulator. Dolphin can upscale your GameCube and Wii games all the way up to 4K and those games really look good with high resolution. The compatibility is 60% playable and 36% perfect and the emulator is still currently being worked on so you can only expect that number to increase. Coming in at number 3 is an emulator that emulates my favorite console of all time, that being the PlayStation 2, and this emulator is PCSX2. This emulator has been under constant development since day one, and the developer's hard work has paid off because this emulator is now 99% compatible with the PS2's game library. Now that's impressive due to how many titles were released for the console. This emulator is easy to set up and has an easy to navigate interface that looks even better showcasing box art for all of your ROMs. The only downfall is that you will need to install your own BIOS file. But once again, a quick Google search will solve that. My number two pick is RetroArch. Now, I know a lot of people won't like this choice, but I picked it because of the convenience it offers. You basically have all of your retro emulators in one place as cores. So instead of having a bunch of standalone emulators, you have a ton of consoles consolidated into one program. Now, I will admit, some emulators are better at standalone emulators, such as Dolphin and PCSX2, but anything older than that, there won't be much difference from a standalone and a RetroArch core. Now, if you are new to emulators, the setup can be a little complicated, but once you understand it, I'm sure it will become a favorite when it comes to an all-in-one retro game emulator. Now it was a tough choice choosing my number one pick because there are two great Switch emulators out there, but I'm only choosing one and my number one pick is Yuzu. Now you may not agree with being able to emulate games that can still be brought for a console that is currently still selling, but you know what? It is what it is. The emulator does a really good job emulating Switch games. Best of all, you can even play exclusives at 60 frames at 1440p or 4K. You can use real Joy-Cons and a Switch Pro controller with your PC with really no extra setup required, which is another great part of this emulator. Yuzu was released in 2018, one year after the Switch and developers have been hard at work and this emulator will only get better in the future. So those are my top 10 go-to emulators. If you agree or disagree with my picks, let me know in the comments and we can debate about it there. Thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next one.